the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, I think, is the perfect cure for Samsung. Hear me out. So a lot of folks will say the S23 Ultra is probably the best Android flagship smartphone you can get. And largely, I agree with that. I think the S23 Ultra is the best phone that Samsung has ever made. Fantastic phone. And they cured all of last year's woes and ails with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. But so did Sony. And this is definitely the best phone that Sony has ever made, in my opinion. So... Yes, we all know Samsung makes great phones. They have great support. They have all these great things. But not everybody wants that. I mean, really, not everybody does. And when it comes down to making those decisions, I think the price tag difference doesn't matter too much. So $1,199, $1,399. And I will say that Sony did bring the price down $200 this year. I am happy about that. Last year, it was insanely too expensive, $1,599. And it had all the heating issues. Like last year's phone, I think, was a big failure, as much as I loved the phone itself. So they fix all those problems here. And one nice thing about Sony is you basically get everything. Right? Minus front facing, you, 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 don't get, you don't get facial recognition, which I think is an odd choice, but I don't actually mind because the fingerprint sensor is so good. And I love how it's built into the power button. So I actually don't use facial recognition on most of my phones. <laughs> the Google Pixel 6 and the Sony Xperia 1 series phones have kind of cured me of that. But looking at this phone, so you get a professional grade screen. 4K, 120 hertz refresh rate, 100% P3 color gamut, all that stuff. Professional quality grade screen, which is fantastic. It looks beautiful. I think it's an amazing looking screen. Now, I wish it were a little brighter. Maximum brightness you're going to get is 1,000 nits on HDR, auto brightness, all that stuff. But it is pretty good. I don't have any complaints about it, really, and it's okay outside. It's not as good as the 1,750 maximum nits brightness you get on the Samsungs. But it's the best we've got with Sony so far. And... Like I said, they give you a lot of stuff that Samsung doesn't. Samsung, do you have expandable storage? No, you don't. Do you have a headphone jack? No, you don't. Do you have a dedicated camera shutter button? No, you don't. So, yes, there's no IR blaster. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even Sony has abandoned that. But there's some stuff that's nice here. And, of course, you get 256 gigabytes to start off with. You got 12 gigs of RAM. You don't have to, like... The S23 Ultra starts with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Then you have to pay more money to get to that 512 storage to get that 12 gigabytes of RAM. So, yeah, by the time you do that, you're almost in the same price category as this phone, but you can put up to one terabyte SD card in here on top of your 256 gigabytes of internal storage. That's nice, right? Of course, it's also got IP68. It has a continuous zoom on here. Having this phone in your pocket is like having a DSLR Sony camera in your pocket. And what's nice is you get the continuous zoom, which is fantastic because it's 85 millimeter, like what, 125, 135 millimeter. It's super nice and it allows you to zoom in losslessly. Like it's a true optical zoom it, like you get with a regular DSLR camera where you have those zoom lens attachments and you kind of turn the, turn the little reticle on it and it allows you to zoom in. Well, that's what you get with this phone, which is fantastic. And it's nice and it's great for mid-range and you get a decent decent digital zoom on it as well so they work really well in the intermediary and then it switches over and you get that mid length mid focal length continuous optical zoom absolutely love it plus you get 4k 120 frames per second on all three of the cameras on the back which is great you get the cinetone and you get the venice uh, cs with all the with all the lenses now which makes for really great cinematic video so when you look at this camera when you look at this phone there's a lot to it that really means you got to dive in on it. Like it's this is an enthusiast phone. It's also like an alternative phone, and I think that's one of the reasons Sony charges so much money because they put all the stuff in there, and it's something where they're like, look, if you want it, we're here. You can come buy it. If you're tired of your Samsung, if you're tired of your Motorola, if you're tired of your Google phone, which are the main options here in the U.S. There's more outside the U.S. But Sony doesn't. They're very un unapologetic about how they do things. But I like that they actually stick with the same design. I love the 6.5 inch screen. I love the form factor on here. And this phone is super, super light. It's almost 50 grams lighter than the S23 Ultra. And the S23 Ultra, for, for its size, the weight is balanced really well. But then you pick this up and it's like, wow, it's so much lighter. We're talking like 50 grams. That's quite a bit because there's 454 grams in a pound. That's pretty substantial. It's not like the 10 gram difference between last year's Z Fold 4 and this year's Z Fold 5. This is a substantial weight difference. And also, I really like this phone because it's easy to use one-handed because it's not super wide. It doesn't have that super wide screen on it. Very easy to access everything. Now, it is a tall screen. So the way the aspect ratio is very tall. It's very kind of 
kind of long phone. So yes, it, it, even with a smaller hand like mine, you see you can't really reach up high. I don't put a lot of my icons up very high for my apps, but as far as just using everything down here, nice one-handed usage and it's good for texting. And I love the, ha the haptic feedback on here is very good for the vibration. And then you've got all the other great stuff. All the bells and whistles, the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, the latest and greatest chipset that you can get. It's cured the heat issues for this phone completely, thank goodness. And it also gives you all day battery. It actually lasts me all day. And it comes in this cool khaki green color. They've got a couple other colors, not a whole lot of them. I think it's three total and also depends on what region in the U.S. You basically get the black one or you get the khaki green. But yeah, the reason I say this is the cure for the Samsung phones is because people are kind of tired of this. I mean, I know that it's cool. I know that it's trendy. I know that it's a really good phone. And I've said a lot of great things about this phone. And honestly, for most people, this probably is a better phone. But it's kind of like the argument between an automatic car and a standard car. Especially if you've grown up in the 90s, the 2000s. They've kind of been phased out largely. There's very few cars anymore that even offer a manual transmission option. But I love having a manual transmission. I've had several WRXs. I've had lots of sports cars. I even My first truck was a single cab F-150 with the manual transmission. I love having the ability to shift and control the, the, the car manually. I love a manual transmission car. They're pretty much gone now, but that's kind of the same way the Sony is. If you want to go hands-on, if you like that extra level of control, if you want to dive in deep and get in when it comes to the camera stuff, the video stuff, if you really love cinematography, if you love watching high-quality video on your phone and enjoying it the way that it's supposed to in true 4K, there's a lot of great reasons that are compelling for this phone, other than the software updates. <laughs> so with this phone, the biggest complaint is software updates because people are like, hey, it's a $1,399 phone. It should be supported longer than three years. You get two years or you get two operating system updates. They don't say two years. They say you get two operating system updates and then you get three years of security patches. So this launched with Android 13, it'll get 14, it'll get 15. My thought process on it is, most people only keep their phones for about three years. Now, these phones are designed to last longer and longer. If you pair it up against the S23 Ultra, four years of operating system updates, five years of security patches. This is the first Samsung phone ever I think will actually go that distance and still have a meaningfully good experience. This, I think, could compete with it because you get the same hardware. It's the same chipset on the inside. It's a beautiful screen. It's a beautiful phone. And... Of course, it's got IP68, it's protected that way. It's got Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the front, and it has this textured Gorilla Glass Victus regular on the back. And I think they did a great, beautiful job designing it. It's even got these ridges around the edges to help hold on to it if you don't want to put a case on it. So I think that this phone will go the distance too. But again, even though these phones can go the distance, even if you look at iPhones, yes, an iPhone will last you five or six years, but most people upgrade about two, three, four years max. So Yes, it is an expensive investment, but it's still good for three years. It's supported two operating system updates, security patches for three years. You'll be good for three years. For me, yes, I buy one every year. Even if I didn't do <laughs> video reviews for phones, I would probably buy a new one every year because I love these phones. But most people are not in that boat. But around three years, yeah, I think you're probably in the market for a new phone. So also, there's also big advancements in cameras that happen every couple of years. Every year, not so much, but about every three years, you get some significant camera advancements, and a lot of this stuff really revolves around the camera, all the cool camera capabilities, and it's so nice that all you have to do is you can pop out the SD card tray. It's got a little slot here. Pull it out right with your finger. You don't need a SIM ejector tool. That way you can change out your SD card slots, I mean, change out your SD card on the go, put another one in, start recording, all that great stuff. So I think there's a lot here. I do wish it were supported for like three OS updates. That would make me a lot happier. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that. But yes, if you're going to get two years of operating system updates, three years of security patches, I'm okay with that. But that's like borderline minimum of what I think is acceptable nowadays, especially for a phone that's expensive. It is a very valid argument. I mean, I'm not going to dismiss that. But I think most people that get this phone at about three years are going to want the new one because most people that buy this phone want all the cool camera stuff. And every couple of years, they shake it up and they give us some really cool things. So you're probably going to naturally want to upgrade by then anyway. So that's kind of my caveat on that. But yeah, the big alternative here is it's just not a Samsung, which is fine. I mean, Samsung makes great phones. I love Samsung. I've been carrying around the Z Fold 5. I'm testing out the Z Flip 5. I've got the Tab S9. They make great things, but not everybody wants that. And that's just like Apple. Not everybody wants Apple. 
and somebody just wants everything that you can get in a phone. 4K screen, the only flagship phone you can get with it. I don't know of any other phone you can get a 4K screen, but 4K screen, fantastic. You also get the continuous true zoom in here, which is the only phone you can get it in. You get great camera capabilities, great cinematic capabilities. This is the phone for cinematic video. And also you can do other cool things. It has pass-through charging, so you can play your gaming on here. No heat-related issues. You can play continuously because you, it'll bypass the battery and give it a true power source. You can do things like stream straight to YouTube. You can do video streaming. You can do video game streaming straight from this with the game software. It's actually pretty probably the number one phone for gaming, and they even have a cool gaming apparatus you can put it in, which is pretty neat too. So I think that there's a lot of merit to this phone. Yes, I know there's a little things here and there, but there pretty much are with most phones. And if you want something that's not a Samsung, that's going to give you the same level of performance, that's going to give you all these other cool things that Samsung doesn't offer, well, these guys are the ones to do it. You just got to pay a little bit extra money for it. And, well, I think it's worth it. So that's all I've got in this video. I just wanted to talk about this because I'm a big fan of the Sony phones. I love Sony. This is my favorite phone for this year, uh, non-foldable. But it even competes with some of the foldables. Like, I really love this phone. So that's all I got. If you have any questions or comments, of course, please go to the comment section. I'll do my best to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.